Hey everybody, Chris Grandy with a November update. We've got uh, lots to talk about. We're out at Panera. Um, it's in, in California. It's in the 60s today. Expecting rains. I wanted to get this video in before it rains and and um, and chat with you all. Uh, this update, I want to talk to you about uh, for tax forecast. Just want to do some house cleaning, um, housekeeping with that. Catching up with everybody. Number two, I'll do. I'm going to do a market update. I had started doing one the week before Thanksgiving, where I was like, "Hey, this may be a, a place where the buyers try to come in," and I guess ended up that's happening. And I'll I'll just show that, and I'll do a follow up video uh, with what's going on today. This this may be just a lot of people getting eager ahead of themselves, um, and then. Um, other housekeeping items is I'll be away traveling next week. So if any of you need me, clients, you can call me on the cell phone. But I'll be on vacation, so unless it's an emergency, you know, uh, you know, maybe email me and we could discuss the week I get back. Uh, so that's it. So let me just bust in. First off, a tax forecast stuff. Let's say I've done most of the tax forecasts. Uh, some of you was more involved. Some of you I just did one. I did the tax forecast for you. Realized there's no immediate action items and uh, didn't didn't assign anything so for most clients it's done a few of you the um, the stuff is hanging out there and um, I need some of that information because for example I need the uh, uh, in order to compare this year to last year I want to see how your income is currently this year I also want to see you know assets that uh, that I don't have uh, listed so that I can check for um, um, you know for try to captured um, cap gain cap loss capital losses and stuff on various accounts so I just it's good to have the information so we can really plan on this because you know for for some of you in certain situations we can do a lot of good um, and for others uh, if it's so this year is similar to last year then not much is going to change except that <clears throat> the tax law changes which did change the tax rates a bit and got rid of and, and changed a couple of the standard deduction exemption situations so um, Generally speaking, from my experience with the tax cuts, is if you were renting and making less than, a, you know, less than a hundred or hundred twenty thousand combined, you're going to make out in the deal because of the new standard deductions, and you're married. Uh, if you were making between, say, two fifty and five hundred, you may see a slight tax increase based on your taxes. And then if you're making over five hundred, you actually will probably see a small decrease. So <clears throat> it depends on the person. They're interesting how the tax law affects things. However, if you do run your own business. There is a, a, a qualified business uh, tax income, taxable income deduction, which is pretty handy, and also makes it um, makes us have to compare whether you should do a retirement plan <clears throat> with your business, or we should take more of that uh, qualified deduction. So, for those of you that own your own businesses, super important to do a forecast before the end of the year, because it could swing things nicely for you in one way or the other. So that's that. So please get me if you haven't got me the tax forecast info. I'm going to be gone next week, so you can send me the info, and I will get to it next week so that we can just make some decisions before, um, you know, before uh, before January 1st. Uh, next thing I want to talk to you about is traveling. I will be away next week, just so you know. I'll be leaving uh, Monday morning, and I'll be back, I believe, Wednesday, if I remember correctly, Wednesday. So uh, <clears throat> I'll be back to work on next Thursday. Again, clients need me. You know my cell phone number. You know my email. If anybody else needs me for anything, I'll get back to you when I get back. <clears throat> as far as market updates goes, uh, I'll just talk about today, and I'm going to cut in with the video I made last week. Hey everybody, Chris Grandy. Uh, this is the market update portion of the Thanksgiving uh, update for you, and we'll call it the November update, the Thanksgiving update, and this part is the market portion. Anyway, just I'll, I'll, I'm going to put up a, an image of the market um, as of Tuesday and if you notice we have this where the market originally fell and it came back and it fell again um, I think from what I see in kind of behavior of the market it looks like people are trying to buy this and this kind of double bottom which is a fairly well in, well known pattern in markets um, because it's a double bottom I think people are just going to reflex buy this so whether it works or not I don't know but I would guess that um, we'll at least have some kind of attempted uh, stock market rally before that would drop below. Now, if the market were to fall right below that um, that second dip, that means it's tremendously weak. I mean, I think the market's kind of weak right now, but there seem to be some buyers holding out, some people holding out for a rally, and enough buyers to push it up. So 
a way to keep it from collapsing, at least the last couple of days. And so every once in a while, I do see some buying coming in. Um, I just watch this stuff. I find it interesting. But it's not strong enough to over, overcome the consistent selling. But now we're at that double bottom point, and this will be a test to see if we can bounce here where a lot of people think it might bounce, and sometimes the obvious right. answer looks like we had a lot of uh, the Fed chairman came out and said, you know, maybe we won't raise rates so aggressively, and people just took that as a, uh, uh, you know, a buy, a buy signal, and we had a very strong day in the market today. And typically you do see strong days in bear markets, so this may be a bottom, but it also just may be a lot of eager people trying to catch a bottom and um, and they may, may be wrong, but because there are a lot of people trying to catch a bottom and the sellers aren't too aggressive right now because they might be expecting this, you really only, have, only have buyers today. So if you don't have many sellers and you have a lot of buyers, it's lopsided and prices tend to go up. It's sort of like if you're selling your house and 45 buyers come through, it's lopsided. You know, you have one person selling, 45 people interested, price, your asking price may go up. The same thing happens in stocks. Uh, so, and the same thing happens on the sell side. We have a lot of sellers. So it's interesting. I think the economic things are still in play. You know, we have oil prices dropping. We have um, things maybe slowing down here and there, but we also have still some very high, robust figures. So the kind of economic data that we have coming out right now is the kind you see at peaks, but you know, it could last for a number of months in this peak condition, you know, consumer confidence at a super high level, um, productivity high, uh, industrial um, um, uh, activity, the business index is well above uh, the 50 number, which shows, you know, anything above 50 is expansion. I think the service index is at 62. So, you know, things are still showing heady growth, but that's typically, you know, the market is very contrarian. So once, if you've had super duper growth and excellent activity for a number of, um, you know, at, at, you know, for a number of months, then that's kind of the sign that we might be peaking out. So, the best time to really plow into the market is when things are bad but are looking better. And the time you want to start getting out is when things are absolutely awesome and they're getting slightly worse. So, going from bad to less bad is bullish, and going from awesome to less awesome uh, can be bearish. So, uh, anyway. Uh, but doesn't mean we wouldn't take a chance. So obviously, if so, there are a lot of value stocks that are down. I know our value manager has been buying a few things, and uh, and I know that our, our quantitative systematic uh, managers uh, are, <clears throat> have bought into the market recently to try to see if this is a bottom. So you know, people are trying. So it doesn't mean you don't try. And then what happens if it doesn't work? You just sell out. It's called a stop loss. But you know, you don't sit there and just guess. You just have you have a discipline. So the value people have a discipline where. If things hit a certain value level where it's cheap to them, they buy it. They don't fuss about many other factors. The quantitative people, they have their systems too. When their indicators, which for some firms can be a combination of, 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 of price and economic fundamentals, or it may just be price. When their signals say buy, they buy. And if, if it doesn't work out, they get out. But the idea is it's, it's just sitting there and trying to guess what's going to happen or trying to be the, the genius prognosticator doesn't always, you know, isn't always the best way to go. And oftentimes it's not the best way to go. So, you know, our, our, it does so it's maybe a rally, it may work, you know, you get involved in it, you buy, um, you buy some value, especially if things are way down. If you have systematic and you think this is a bottom and your signals say this is a bottom, you buy in. And if it doesn't work, big deal. You know, it's just, it, you know, you get out. It's better than, you know, being wrong and, and having an ego and then losing 20 more percent. It's more like, you know, okay, if I try to get in. If it doesn't work, I, I lose, you know, a quarter percent um, because I have risk management in place. So that's just how that works. But um, anyway, so it doesn't mean you don't try. So we'll see if this is a real rally or if this is a, a bear market rally. And again, very strong days tend to happen in bear market rallies. Another thing I want to talk to you about is I'm testing some new client software, and I have a few of you um, helping me do that. If uh, are there are others of you that would like to help me, let me know. Um, we've been using eMoney, which is a fidelity company, for our client portal where we link all our accounts, we have our storage vault and everything, and it's a pretty good system. But what it lacks is, is I find that you know after polling even a small group, like 10 or 12 of my clients, and it was, that's enough data for me to figure out, and I can tell who's using what, that people are just not going on the site, they're not using it as a resource. And part of the reason is, is there's no mobile app and there's no easy access. You know, every time you get to log in and then you gotta do a password reset and you gotta get second factor and and then you know, your password reset doesn't work and I gotta re... So I'm, the, the company we're testing is called Right Capital and they're, they're uh, a newer company in the planning industry. They've 
a great presence, and they have a great app with which on the iPhone you can use your fingerprint, and I'm sure on the Android also you can use your um, <clears throat> you can use your fingerprint to to log in, and you can see right now in the app you can see all your accounts, you can uh, look at spending analysis, and uh, they'll eventually add more functionality. But at least that way, um, you know, and if I if there's to do items, what I'm looking for in a in a planning app. And thank God the sun is out. I mean, you guys may not like the sun, but I'm really happy that it's out. Um, what I'm looking for is kind of a hub where I can easily show you uh, planning scenarios. It's not mysterious. We can talk about stuff, and you can see where you are. Also, I want something with document storage, which we do have now, so that's not something I need. But um, I want the document storage so that you can access your legal documents, your insurance statements, wherever you are. You know, you're at the lawyer's office, you need to see what your auto insurance is. I want you to be able to pull up your phone, and there it is. I mean, you could do it on Google Drive and stuff too, and we're gonna, you know, I'm gonna test a few ways to do this, but, you know, I want that. And then I want, um, you know, I, I also want uh, to be able to, for you to be able to see stuff just very easily. You know, I don't want it to be a mystery. I don't want the, the data to be hard to get at. And uh, so, in addition, there's some other tools. So there are pros and cons to both. Uh, the e-money, the current system, is extremely labyrinthical, and which is good. A detailed, tons of financial planning um, methodologies I can use and things, and tools and techniques. Uh, right Capital is a little simpler, but they do have a very good tax calculator and a Roth op optimizer. And so, you know, for a lot of my clients, especially. Now, like my baby more clients, you know, a lot of you, like my mom, she uses her, her iPhone. Uh, she doesn't go on a computer anymore. She's just retired. She's not in front of a computer. She does use her tablet and her phone. So if she could just see her stuff right there on the phone, that's good. So this is just the kind of stuff I want to get feedback from you from. And so currently I'm soliciting that feedback from about six clients. Any more of you want to test it out, please let me know. It's very, very easy for me to add you. And uh, you know the company is uh, very secure. It's a good product, uh, well respected by some of my peers. Whom, whom is where I found it. You know, this is how I found out about it, it was through peers um, that use it very well. So um, that's just something else I want to bring up is, is uh, new planning software, always testing different ways to invest to bring you a better experience. And lastly, I want something where an, an easy app to use because when I give you assignments, so for example, I do a lot of planning for you, um, but don't tell you about it because it's just that's what you hire me to do is to do stuff behind the scenes. So, you know, there, you know, I have a checklist. Some of you should know I have a checklist of over 120 items that I look at each year for our full service clients. And those items, I check them. Now, if there's nothing to do, I'm not going to call you and say, Hey, I checked these 10 items and I'm not going to bother you. You're, you're doing what you're doing. <coughs> and, um, so I have those checklist items and I want to do those for you. And, but if there's something that pops up, I want to be able to assign it to you, and then you'd be able to look in the app and say, oh, Chris has a, a to-do item for me there. And I could do it by email also, but it'd be nice just to have uh, have it all in a hub on the client thing. So I could send you an email, or you would get a reminder email, but it would all be on the planning app, so it'd be easy to do. So anyway, um, just some thoughts on, on, on having a, a really good client experience for you, and I'm always thinking about how to make that better. So if any of you want to help out, let me know. Thanks.